In this video, I want to explain how to solve problem 8.5 from your circuit analysis textbook. This is from Fundamentals of Electric Circuits by Charles Alexander and Matthew Siddiqui. So in problem 8.5, we have the RLC circuit that you see on the screen here. So we have a current source and it is four U of T amps, which means that prior to T equals zero, this will behave like a zero amp current source. And then afterwards, uh, right at T equals zero, it makes this switch. And from T equals zero onward, it will behave like a four amp source. Prior to T equals zero, a zero amp current source behaves like an open circuit. And so at T equals zero minus, we have that current source illustrated um, with an open circuit. We have a four ohm resistor, and that is where our reference I is measured through. We have a quarter farad capacitor, one Henry inductor, and then our voltage reference V is going to be relative to the six ohm resistor that we see here. So this is a little bit different problem in that in a lot of these problems, the I that we are looking for is the current through an inductor, and the V that we're looking for is the voltage across a capacitor. That's a very typical way that we solve RLC circuits. But in this case, we're going to look at I through a 4 ohm resistor and V across the 6 ohm resistor in the circuit. And so what we're asked to solve in 8.5 is we want to find I of zero plus, V of zero plus. We want to find DI DT at zero plus, DV DT at zero plus, and we want to find I at infinity and V at infinity, so our steady state conditions after some prolonged period of time. So in order to inform what's happening at zero plus, let's go ahead and look at this circuit at zero minus. So at zero minus, this current source, as I mentioned, can re be represented by an open circuit here. The capacitor has reached steady state, so it's behaving like an open circuit here. Our inductor behaves like a short, so I've replaced that with a short right here. And so now we're looking to figure out, okay, what is going to be the voltage here? And then what is going to be the current there? Well, at steady state, effectively, we don't have any source here, and we can just assume that these capacitors left their own devices the capacitor has completely discharged, all the current through the inductor has basically discharged and dissipated. And so at t equals zero minus, effectively we've just got a couple resistors in parallel with one another. So we can assume everything's dissipated and at this point our current is going to be zero amps and our voltage across the six ohm resistor is going to be zero volts. So that is going to be our initial conditions at zero minus. And so that will also tell us that the voltage across this capacitor at zero minus is going to be zero volts. And that also tells us that because we have no voltage here, we're going to have no voltage over there, we're going to have no current there, so the same zero amps of current is going to be flowing through the one Henry inductor. So all the charges dissipated, the current through the inductor initially is zero amps. So now let's look at this circuit right at t equals zero plus. So at the moment that the four amp source has turned on, what is going on? So we put the capacitor and the inductor back into play. And so at this point, we know that the current through an inductor is not going to have a stepwise instantaneous change. So it's going to maintain zero amps. This capacitor is going to maintain the zero volts across it that we had previously. And so now when we're looking at what's going to happen with the four amps of current, we've got to figure out, okay, where can those four amps go? Well, if we've got zero volts here, and this is our I, well, what's happening with the current through this resistor? If I've got zero volts here, that means I have zero volts there. And Ohm's law tells me that zero volts divided by four ohms is zero amps. So therefore, the I through the resistor is zero volts divided by four ohms, or zero amps. And so here, we've got since the current through the inductor at T equals zero minus is zero amps, current through the inductor at zero plus, also zero amps. So I've got zero amps going through here, 
and that means I've got zero amps going through there, so V at zero plus is also going to be zero volts. And so these are our initial conditions. I at zero plus, zero amps, V at zero plus, zero volts. So now we need to figure out what is going to be the derivative of those quantities. What are we going to have in terms of di dt? What are we going to have in terms of dv dt? And so at zero plus, when we have zero amps through the four ohm resistor and zero amps through the inductor, all four amps from this current source flow through the capacitor. So at this point we have no current flowing here, we have no current in this branch over here, so all four amps that flow up here, none goes there, none goes there, all of it goes through the capacitor. So the capacitor can have a stepwise instantaneous change in current, it just cannot have a stepwise instantaneous change in voltage. And so we have a step up from zero current going through that capacitor immediately as soon as that switch flips on, it just goes click, and we have four amps flowing through that capacitor. And so we now can look and see what is that gonna do in terms of the current and voltage relationship. Well, if you remember, the current through capacitor is equal to the capacitance times the change in voltage with respect to time of that um, capacitor voltage. And so this IC equals CDV dt. That is specifically for the capacitor. So I'm labeling that I sub C at zero plus equals C dvc dt at zero plus. So what I'm trying to do is figure out what is my change in voltage with respect to time, not the V on the circuit as labeled V. I'm not talking about the V over here on the 6 ohm. We'll get to that a little bit later. I'm specifically looking at what is happening to the voltage across the capacitor with respect to time at t equals zero plus. And so if I look at this relationship, I have four amps of current right there. It's a quarter farad capacitor, so I can just multiply both sides by four, and I realize that what I get is a dvc dt at zero plus of 16 volts per second. So what that means is, right here, this voltage is changing at a rate of 16 volts per second right at t equals zero because that is in parallel with my four ohm resistor over here, that also means the voltage across this four ohm resistor is changing at the same rate that the voltage across the capacitor is changing. And so if I go down here, what I'm gonna see is that dvc dt equals the change in voltage at the four ohms. So I'm labeling that dv sub four ohms dt and therefore the change in current through the resistor is directly proportional to the change in voltage because Ohm's law is still in effect. And so what that says to me is if I instantaneously change the voltage, I'm going to have a similar change in current. They are directly proportional. So we have I equals V over R. So if we're looking at di dt, then we can just say, well, that's equal to dv dt divided by whatever our resistance is. And so di dt, which is going to be the reference current going through this four ohm resistor is equal to the change in voltage of the four ohm resistor divided by the four ohms of resistance. So therefore, di dt at zero plus is gonna equal this 16 volts per second change that we have divided by the four ohm resistor. So we're changing the voltage over time that we found from the capacitor's change in voltage. And so therefore the current change, I, the di dt at zero plus is equal to four amps per second. So that's what we have back here. If we go to this circuit, we're looking at the change in current with respect to time is based on the change in voltage with respect to time that really affects this entire three branch region. That is also gonna be the same change in voltage divided across these two different components that are in series. So we figured out our dv dt, we divide that dv dt by four ohms, that gives us our di dt at zero plus. Now what we want to do is we want to use a similar relationship to look at what is going to be our um, voltage change here and let's see if we can 
use that to figure out what is ultimately going to change our voltage here. We can look at our di dt relationship and as this current changes, so changes the current through the 6 ohm resistor there. And so that will tell us something about how the voltage is changing. So if we go back on down here, the change in voltage, dv dt, is going to equal 6 ohms times the change in current through that 6 ohm resistor, which also happens to be the current through the inductor because they are in series. So if we can figure out di l dt at 0 plus, we can figure out dv dt at 0 plus just by multiplying the di dt value through the inductor, which is the same as the di dt through the 6 ohm resistor, just by 6 ohms. And so what do we know about the voltage of the inductor at 0 plus? We already solved for that. Um, and we figured out that the voltage is going to be equal to, we had, um, at the beginning, we had zero volts across both of these. We had no current here. And so this is also going to still be zero volts. And so we have um, VL of zero plus equals one Henry. DIL at zero plus, and so since the voltage across the capacitor was zero volts, and the current through both the inductor and the six ohm resistor is zero amps, you can actually get into a scenario where you do Kirchhoff's voltage law around the right mesh, and so if we look at that, what are we going to have? Well, we had no voltage here, obviously, and if you keep going around, if we even don't pretend like we don't know what's actually happening to the voltage right here, we had no current flowing through a 6 ohm resistor, so we have no voltage drop. If there's no voltage drop here, there's no voltage drop here, we can't have any voltage dropped across the inductor. So therefore, all three of these components have 0 volts dropped across them at t equals 0 plus. So given that VL at 0 plus, the voltage across the inductor at 0 plus, is 0 volts, that's going to be equal to L times di dt at 0 plus. And so if we go down here, the di L dt at 0 plus therefore has to be 0. And so because we have di L dt at 0 plus equals to 0 amps per second, we can take that, that is the change in current that is the current through the inductor, that's also the change in current through the 6 ohm resistor that it's in series with. If we take that change in current and multiply it by 6 ohms, Ohm's law still applies there. This change in current, 0 amps per second, is going to be the same as the change in current through the 6 ohm resistor. If I change the current, I can just multiply the change in current by the resistance, and Ohm's law tells me that gives me the voltage. So therefore, dv dt, my overall reference v, which is going to be this voltage across the 6 ohm resistor, that dv dt is therefore also going to be 0 volts per second. So now we have those values. So now we want to go and look at what's going to happen with that circuit as t goes to infinity. So if we look here, this is how the circuit is going to behave as t goes to infinity. We have a 4 amp source still on. We have our 4 ohm resistor. This is going to be our I of infinity is going to be the, volt the uh, current through the 4 ohm resistor here. Our capacitor has gone to steady state, so it's behaving like an open circuit. Our inductor has gone to steady state, so it's behaving like a short. And then over here, our voltage reference at infinity is going to be the voltage across the 6 ohm source. So this looks very much like a current divider. So we have a 4 amp source and the current divided amongst a 4 ohm and a 6 ohm resistor. So therefore, we can just use our current divider expression, take the 4 amps, multiply it by the opposite resistance, divide it by the sum of the two resistances, and so we get 4 amps times 6 ohms divided by a total of 10 ohms. That gives us 2.4 amps. So at t going to infinity, we have 2.4 amps through the 4 ohm resistor. And then we want to figure out, okay, what is that voltage going to be? Well, if we know we have 2.4 amps going through here and we have 4 volts going through there, we can just multiply 4 by 2.6, or sorry, 4 by 2.4 and get 9.6 volts. So that is going to be 
equal to 9.6 volts right there. Okay, you can also, if you wanted to, you could just do a little bit of um, Kirchhoff's current law right there. Say you have four amps coming in, you know you have 2.4 amps leaving here, plus whatever V infinity over six ohms is. That's exactly what I did here in your solution. And you just solve for V infinity, still works out to 9.6 volts. So that gives you all the information you need to know about solving problem 8.5 on the circuit analysis homework for this week.